Hello ladies and gentlemen, George here uh, with another ASL Tips and Tactics. Uh, I'm also known on Discord as Corporal Curious. Um, this episode will feature uh, the scenario called Le Manoir. It's ASL scenario 13. It takes place on D-Day on the Norman coast. And as you all may know, uh, what happened in the Norman coast is there was a fight across Bocage. And what Bocage is, is huge hedgerows um, that uh, extrude from the, from the ground with at least a, a wall of, of dirt four feet high. And, and they're well depicted in the game of Advanced Squad Leader. Uh, and this is what this scenario is all about. It's about an engagement on the Norman coast in the Bocage. However, uh, this scenario goes against the it's counterintuitive because what actually took place uh, on the Norman coast was the Germans were ambushing the uh, Americans advancing through the Bocage. What you have here in terms of OB is a handful of, of Germans. And what is this phallic symbol there? Oh yeah, it's an MG42. So you have uh, uh, a handful of, of uh, squads, two squads and a half squad, uh, two leaders, and a hero with three MGs and three Foxholes. And basically, uh, in this case, the um, Americans had a successful power drop. They've gathered everyone except 136 men, and they're advancing on their objective, which is a bridge. However, uh, they soon came upon uh, accurate German machine gun fire, which stalled their, their uh, advance. Now, in terms of in terms of the American OB, look at look at this uh, handsome depiction of an American GI. Good job, folks. Uh, you have 11 elite 747s, three uh, leaders, and as as I've said before, for those of you coming from the classic game, the 80 and 70 are not poor leaders. They help you in spotting. They help you in avoiding uh, uh, cowarding. And especially the 70 leader, if he breaks or is eliminated because he has the same morale, morale level as the, his squads, they don't pretty much care about him. You have two mortars. The mortars do not have any smoke, nor do they 44 bazookas, by the way. Um, correct. And now what's, what's important to note in, in, in this scenario is first and foremost, the terrain SSR. Uh, all walls and hedges are bocage, there's only open ground, and for some trivial matter, the, the uh, units start on another board, there are no hills, but the fact that there is no hills is completely insignificant to the scenario. Now, what's in, the other thing that's important is if you read the aftermath, you get a hint as to how to win the scenario. And basically, unbeknown to Dolan, the leader of the American forces advancing on their objective, uh, other units were pinned down with the same uh, German machine gun fire, but a, a couple of elements of his forces managed to flank the Germans and ultimately neutralize the objective. So with that said, with a global overview of the uh, scenario, let's develop a quick plan to see how we would translate this in terms of tactics on the map board. So let's look at our little Word document, boom, here. So what I'm suggesting in terms of a strategy, and I'll maximize this a little bit so everybody can see, is your launch point should be here, and you should try to, to flank the uh, German positions through the, by moving through the, uh, not the hedgerows, the bocage. Big difference in terms of rules. Um, also, you should, so what I'm proposing here is a hammer and anvil strategy. So here is your hammer swinging. This is what I call my, my anvil or my bastion of defense against any counterattack. And right here, these woods here. And I, what I propose you doing is putting the motors there. And this is complete, this arrow here is an advance, right? But it's completely an optional diversionary attack. Um, so you can divide his attention into two. Now it's completely optional because you may, uh, by any uh, stretch of the imagination or by any means or whatever you prefer, 
uh, either do a scattered assault, take one flank or the other, and not divide your forces. That's another option. How uh, well uh, those options would work, I, to be honest with you, I haven't evaluated them. To counter the American strategy, it is imperative that the German has at least some forces in hex Q4 and V4, and the reasons why is rather obvious. Um, in Q4, you'll have, uh, you can put down a fire lane here and there, uh, staving off any uh, counterattacks from the flanks. Uh, and here would be a supporting position to Q4 in V4. Okay, uh, with that said, on to the uh, scenario start file so we can put some units on the board and see how everything works out. So uh, going back to, um, uh, to uh, our plan, here's uh, hex Q4 and here's V4. And now we know where, where we can position our machine guns in order to um, stem the uh, American assault. Um, so now, in terms of uh, terrain, you'll notice that all the stone buildings are um, are stone, and all the wooden buildings are stone, because as per terrain SSR, um, all the buildings are stone. All the walls and hedges are bocage, and the way you do this is simply by going here and then you click on Terrain SSR, and then you can click on Buildings. Don't forget to specify your board. Construction, all stone. And then Walls and Hedges, they're considered in the same, um, in the same category, are Bocage. And that is Bocage. You click on Apply, Done, OK, and you're good. And that's how I got this board here. So let's look at the uh, German OB. Let's see how everything works out. Here's Q4. Let's put a heavy there. Uh, put a half squad. And put them in the, um, put them in foxhole. Put everything in the foxhole. Come on, George, dexterity, dexterity. Uh, put another heavy on the other flank in V... V4. Let's put, let's deploy one squad. Uh, half squad, clone, there you go. Yep, put them there. Uh, you want your leaders, your say highest DRM there. Um, where would I put this? Um, where would I put this? Um, this voxel? I put it right here. Okay. And let's put at least one, well, yeah, here. You need a lot of firepower in this flank. So instead of a half squad, put the full squad there holding the MG. And then your nine minus one leader. Make him a bit of a powerhouse there. Uh, now I have two half squads. I want all my MGs in foxholes. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let's put this guy there. And let's keep one guy in reserve, either in a building or somewhere else. And let's not forget the fox. So ideally, this is a great position to be in, I believe. Um, and as for the Americans, we said that they would advance from here across to here. Um, so as the Americans, you should not forget that um, basically what I did is I established a little five base here. 
But you should not forget that smoke is your friend in this case. They have a high net exponent. Let's see if I can roll it. Yeah, there it goes. So you put in your smoke counter here. One unit has has uh, popped smoke. The other unit can then boom go through the bocage. Unless you have wall advantage, unless you claim wall advantage with bocage, let's, let's put them in bypass here. Um, they can't fire at you. They're in, they're technically in uh, a blind hex to them. So the only difficulty is getting through the open ground here and here to flank this position. So there are special rules with respect to bocage. I'm going to pull the, uh, put the rule reference down below. But basically, with bocage, uh, ordinarily, if you had a hedge and one unit was here and the other unit was there, with bocage, they don't have LOS to each other unless this unit, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it claims wall advantage. Um, but that's one of the intricacies uh, uh, with uh, Bocage. Is if this was a wall or a hedge, each unit would have a line of sight to each other. But across a hedge uh, hexide of this nature, uh, there is no LOS when it comes to Bocage because they are, they are a level one obstacle. Uh, don't take my word for it. I could be wrong. Double check it. I'm giving you the rule reference. B as in Bravo 9.5. Okay. The other thing you need to know as the German player is you have a choice between rate of fire and residuals, um, which is important, which is important. So whenever I play this game, I opt for rate of fire over residuals because the fact of the matter is the, unit, the American player can scatter his approach. And then if you are locked in without any, um, without any uh, rate of fire, you're pretty much toast in terms of you have just let the American advance. Now, with respect to rate of fire and uh, field of fire, basically, if you get rate, if you're... If your MG was set up in a woods or a building hex, his covered arc would be fixed. However, since I'm, op I'm setting up my MGs in open ground in the foxhole, um, I am, my, my covered arc is not restricted. And the way you get the covered arc counter here is, is under unit, gun, boom. And then suppose this MG, instead of it being in the, in the foxhole, it was in the uh, woods, and I got rate, and my covered arc would be fixed. So you want to avoid that restriction on, on yourself. Now, as the American player, I did speak about having a, bash, a, a base of, uh, uh, of attack here. Uh, so basically what that means is uh, Lieutenant Peters here can act as a spotter, and then Let's deploy the squad, half squad, clone. Okay, so we have this fellow with a mortar on the first turn. I have two units there. Okay, what happened to the, oh, there he is. Okay, so what happens is, is let's say they set up here to begin with, okay? Mortar can, uh, can, can move one, one to there. He cannot assault move because uh, it takes him two movement points to, to move into there. That's his whole movement factors. Um, and that's what it is. So unless they move with the leader, then they can assault move to there. And then during the advance phase, Instead of putting the lead, the the um, the mortar in danger, um, he put this guy as a spotter, and uh, he can probably uh, 
direct fire to there. Now spotters are in C 9.3, right? And can we see him? Yep, clean LOS, right? But still, the mortar will not be subject to uh, any MG fire. He will um, put another mortar in another location, and then he has to worry about two different uh, targets. And if he breaks, if he breaks, he can retreat. And during your next advance phase, you can advance the motor up. So uh, the German player had to, in order to completely eliminate your mortar fire, he'll have to do some work. Okay. The other thing you should know is, once you reach here, you may be tempted to use wheel repeater as opposed to ordinary smoke. I do not recommend that. So under um, under A24.3, um, I believe it is noted that, let's uh, zoom in here a bit, it is noted that the US uh, player does have Will Peter, but his, uh, to a detriment of a two exponent as opposed to a three exponent. What Willy Peter does essentially is if you successfully put the Willy Peter in there, he'll have to take a, a morale check. I'm not going to go into details with a morale check. Chances are that this fellow will pass it. The other uh, detriment uh, of using Willy Peter as opposed to, to uh, smoke is you might start a fire and your victory objectives are close to uh, places that can allow for the spread of fires. And what that can entail is rule A2616, control forfeiture. So if you intentionally burn any of these two objectives, the last person that controlled it, and if that was the German player, essentially you just forfeited your, any control of those buildings to your adversary. So some, that's something not to do. The other thing I avoided in doing in performing in this center, and I highly suggest that to avoid it, you may be tempted to fire on broken squads uh, in order to casualty reduce them and eliminate them. The twist and the irony in this game is heat of battle A dot, uh, A15. The Lazarus school, school, the Lazarus rule, as I like to call it. Way often and more often than not, I ended up breaking a squad that had no hope of of getting back into the game by firing on them. Um, user judgment in firing on broken units. And, and that's basically it. That's more or less. The scope of this channel is to give you the most amount of information in the least amount of time. I've went 18 minutes, and that's more than enough uh, information to uh, research. I'm also, if I haven't uh, uh, said this before, I am also linking some videos about the um, Bocage uh, battles in, in Normandy below. There is one other fellow that made a YouTube video concerning this particular scenario by the name of Robin Chung. Show him some love. Go watch his video on his channel as well. I'm not sure if he's active anymore, but it's uh, worth your while. If I've made any mistakes, I, I welcome constructive criticism by all means comment below. I love it. There was a lot of interesting commentary before. Uh, also, if you haven't seen my previous video, please check out from beginning to end what uh, Jim Bishop had to say about the game, about the, uh, the, the rules and intricacies about armored fighting vehicle movement and defensive fire. Uh, He's a man worth his salt, and his advice is worth its weight in gold. Um, so definitely check out my previous video. Also, I am uh, conducting a little confidential poll. So here's the uh, scope of this poll. It might not be ASL related, but what I'd like you to do is, remember it's confidential. If you change your underwear frequently, I'd like you to click on the like button. And if you're not changing your underwear frequently for any particular reason, then 
truly and, and, and honestly press the dislike button all right i'm looking forward to making another interesting video for you guys stay tuned and rollo and see you next time take care